All right, guys, welcome to uh, Real Classic Film Reviews and welcome to the part of the channel where we usually take a bit of a deep dive into a classic film release on home video. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start a monthly update series. I've had a lot of people asking me um, here on YouTube and across some of my other social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, etc., to kind of show what I've been picking up recently or have a more of an in-depth look into my collection. So this is the first video in that series. This is going to take a, a little look at what I've picked up over the last maybe months to six, maybe even seven weeks uh, throughout April and probably some of the stuff that kind of I picked up in late March as well. So we're going to start with um, this, the 1971 Vintage Classics collection uh, from Studio Canal, a uh, release of Fright starring Susan George, uh, Anna Blackman, amongst others. Directed by Peter Collinson, who incidentally directed The Italian Job. Uh, couldn't be more of a different film to this. Uh, this is a really good kind of gritty, um, claustrophobic kind of home invasion movie almost. It's not really, you know, the, the cover might kind of sell it as a slasher. It's not really a slasher, although it does have a lot of similar themes that you'll see recur in uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. You know, the lovely Susan George here is the babysitter who is, you know, becomes the victim of an escaped mental patient, um, which might sound massively familiar to you if you're a fan of Carpenter's Halloween, but great, great release this. Um, you know, loads of great special features on there. Uh, interview with Kim Newman and Susan George. Definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of those kind of uh, late 60s, early 70s. Like I said, this is 71 uh, releases. Definitely worth checking out. Likewise, uh, I also picked up the BFI flip side edition of I Start Counting um, from David Green, starring uh, a very young uh, Jenny, Jenny Agatha, who was... I think it was she did she do this before walkabout i think she did this just before walkabout uh really really great late was it late 60s this i want to say it was late 60s but it might have been 69 or 70 um kind of another psychological thriller really but you've got uh agatha's character who's suspects her adopted brother or uh, her kind of stepbrother of being a killer of girls uh, some local murders that occur and you know a suspicion falls on him from her uh, but really really well done really great to see this kind of time period in, in England as well where um, as the film shows we've got kind of the, the demolition of some of the old houses and the, uh, the the construction of kind of what would be considered at the time modern high-rise buildings um, so there's some great location work in this uh, and some really, really odd uh, um, music choices that I found quite jarring at first, but eventually do kind of grow on you as you go through the film um, that do kind of lead to the atmosphere. But again, this isn't a great release. Uh, brilliant booklet in there. Great special features. You know, the whole pile of them on the back there. So another one definitely worth picking up. Uh, I also picked up the Masters of Cinema double pack, two films by John Ford. Uh, featuring, as you can see there, Straight Shooting and Hellbent. Um, I think Straight Shooting was actually Ford's first uh, feature-length film after he'd done like half a dozen shorts. So that was his kind of first major film. Um, I mean, God, he had like 140-odd film credits, uh, but he was kind of quite prolific around this time. So this is Straight Shooting was from 1917, and I think... Uh, Hell Bent was from um, the following year, from 1918. But between 1917 and 1920, I think it was, I mean, Ford directed about 30 films in three years. So, you know, he was kind of pretty prolific in terms of what he'd done. So I think it was uh, Hell Bent his eighth film. I think Hell Bent was his eighth film. But yeah, two great kind of examples of early Ford. Um, and, you know, he's already teaming up with people like... Uh, Harry Carey and things like that. So great book, look, great release from Masters of Cinema. Reversible artwork there as well, if you want to show the artwork for Hellbent as opposed to straight shooting, which I have displayed there. So yeah, if you're into your Westerns and your John Ford, then certainly worth tracking down a copy of that. So uh, another Eureka Masters of Cinema title, uh, picked up the last warning. Uh, really, really, again, atmospheric kind of, it's got like Phantom of the Opera vibes. It's basically, um, you know, a murder mystery 
kind of set in the uh, the world of the theatre. Uh, and this is from uh, the great German director Paul Lenny, who also directed The Man Who Laughs and Waxworks, which are also available on the Masters of Cinema label. But yeah, definitely, definitely worth checking this one out. It's kind of, it's not, it's not the same, but it did have vibes of um, Theatre of Blood, which I also love. Uh, obviously, it's not the same as that, but again, really, really great addition. You know, Masters of Cinema doing the... Uh, doing the business there so great artwork all the way through but just an absolute classic so yeah definitely worth checking that out if you are a fan of things like that brilliant slip cover as well there that i'm really uh, a fan of all right so uh next up what should i have uh got a couple of criterions so Picked up Clute, which is one of my favourite kind of 70s murder mystery thrillers. Uh, great Alan J. Pakula film, who I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of his. Um, All the President's Men, The Parallax View, etc. But, you know, Sutherland is the kind of out of his depth, uh, small time. He's not a cop, is he? Like a, what do you call it? Private detective who goes to the big city to find Jane Fonda's call girl. Um, one of my favourite Fonda films, actually, uh, she got kind of one of her two Oscars for this. Um, what was her other, other Oscar for? Coming Home, a bit later in the 70s, but really, really great film. Again, it's a Criterion release, so not a new one, but one that I needed to pick up and add to the collection. So brilliant artwork all the way through that. Great film. Going to be looking forward to re-watching that. It's been a while since I've seen it, so... Um, what's next? Swing Time. Swing Time uh, from the 30s, 1936. You know, one of the uh, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers films. A film by George Stevens, who obviously went on to direct uh, kind of mega epics like Giant and Shane. Uh, really, really kind of good example of, you know, if you're thinking of uh, those kind of musicals, song and dance movies from the kind of Depression era, you know, forget all your troubles and watch a lot of people have a dance kind of movies. This this kind of thing is probably what you're going to be thinking of. And um, it's been a while since I've seen it, but it, it is kind of famous, well, infamous, I guess, for having the uh, Bojangles of Harlem blackface routine in there. So a uh, bit of a shame, but otherwise a great film. Uh, next up, oh, I picked up a DVD. So I picked up uh, Thunderbirds. Uh, it's a double pack, includes Thunderbirds I Go and Thunderbirds 6. I remember, I've seen Thunderbirds I Go plenty of times, but I don't really remember Thunderbird 6. I mean, I'm sure I've seen it, but I just can't really remember it. Uh, but I watched, I actually watched a documentary on Thunderbirds on here on YouTube. And I used to love it as a kid, you know, when it was kind of rebroadcast in the UK in the very early 90s, I want to say. Uh, I used to watch all the episodes there, so I'm definitely looking forward to uh, checking these out. And I must have a little think about picking up the actual set as well. Um the uh, the series set because you know it's a childhood classic plenty of nostalgia in there for me so I'm really looking forward to revisiting that uh, what shall I show next right so uh, picked up or finally picked up Scum uh, the indicator release of Scum the 40th anniversary edition again been a long time since I watched this I think I watched it on the last time I watched it was probably on TV maybe it was on Channel 4 or something like that but uh, still a you know it was still a tough watch um, and there's a reason why it kind of came under fire when it did back in the late 70s. I think it was, you know, uh, Alan Clark's first TV version of it was actually banned and actually appeared on the, was, did it appear on the Video Nasties list? One of the very rare non-horror films to appear on the Video Nasties list and um, with, <laughs> with good reason uh, because it is, you know, it, it, it takes no prisoners. So obviously amazing turn by Ray Winston. Um, just, you know very gritty the booklet in this i mean the book is just i can't wait to to check that out and then it comes with a, a giant poster which i won't kind of unravel there but uh you can usually find this on a good deal so if you've yet to pick the um indicator release of scum up then you know certainly do so because uh, it's a great set and just a super powerful film all right next up uh i picked up i finally pulled the trigger on uh, Dawn of the Dead, so um, I didn't bother with the enormously thick um, set when it first came out. It was a bit too pricey for me, and just space-wise, 
I couldn't really kind of justify filling the space on my shelf with it. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it's always Night of the Living Dead for me is my favourite and I'm, I kind of lose interest after this one. So the Land of the Dead, the Day of the Dead, the Whatever of the Dead that came after this don't really hold that appeal to me, but I do really enjoy this film. Um, you know, 1978, it's a classic, isn't it? I, you know, I don't actually mind that Zack Snyder remake, although it's been a long time since I've seen it. I might have to go back and reappraise it. But yeah, this is the, uh, well, it's the regular edition, but it's still kind of comprehensive. Um, great artwork all the way through, featuring all these different cuts of the movie, uh, theatrical, extended, the Argento, I'm not sure if I've seen the Argento cut. Anyway, um, bags of stuff in there to have a little look at. But yeah, looking forward to it. It's been a while since I've seen it as well, so I'm looking forward to just revisiting it full stop. And finally, I picked up the uh, Colombian Noir number two, uh, volume two, uh, because I know that the third volume is obviously on its way, but I don't want to kind of get left behind. I've only seen uh, Murder by Contract so far out of this set but i mean indicator god if, you, if you're into anything like these kind of films or whatever and you're not picking these sets up then you need to get involved uh pretty quickly i mean the attention to the detail and everything again the booklet the book colossal um yeah that's the one i've seen murder by contract but i always remember having a great tagline is it on here um no it's not on here oh yes uh double rates for women because a woman is always double trouble Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, the artwork across all of these. So you've got Murder by Contract, Tight Spot, great cast in that, Rogers and Robinson. And a fair to remember again, uh, Ford and uh, here with uh, The Mob, uh, 711 Ocean Drive and Framed again with Glenn Ford. But I mean, the artwork and everything all the way through all of these is absolutely immaculate. Uh, really looking forward to number three. It took me a while to kind of get through the first box set, but when I did, you know, I was super glad. And I hope they kind of keep keep up i'll never get those back in off camera but yeah definitely definitely worth checking that box out it's excellent guys that's it that's uh what i picked up in the last kind of six weeks on um six weeks to seven weeks so i'll probably do one of these monthly if you guys are interested um i've got some good reviews coming up soon i've got my 80th video i think next 80 videos i don't know how that happened uh just real kind of reach out to all you guys and just say a big thank you for all of your support all of your subs Everyone who subscribed, everybody who comments, everybody who watches, likes or dislikes, whatever, you know, it's um, it's always appreciated. Uh, I always try and reply to everybody that I can in some way, shape or form. But guys, again, thank you for watching. Um, stay safe, take care. See you soon. Bye bye.